Let's look at how to stop and start an AWS instance with PowerShell. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the git ec2 instance command. And you can see here, I already have an instance I would like to manipulate. So first off, let me go ahead and just run git ec2 instance. And this will put the instance object inside of that instance variable. Okay, so once I have that, then I can dive down into it and see what some of the output is. And then you can see there that the instances property has the instance ID, instance type, and a lot of other information about that particular instance. One way to start an EC2 instance that's already stopped is to pass the instance ID to the instance ID parameter on the start EC2 instance command. So I need to get the instance ID by itself. So to do that, I'll just go ahead and create an instance ID variable there. And then now you can see that the instance ID is just simply the instance ID that I've been playing with. All right, so now I will go ahead and run start EC2 instance and that I will pass it to the instance ID that I'm working with. And then you can see there that it brings back some information. So now I'd like to check and see what the status is. But as you noticed, you know, it's not giving me anything back. You know, there's a get EC2 instance status is supposed to get the status of the current instance. And it's supposed to be if, if it's stopped, if it's started and that sort of thing. But if I just wait for a minute there, now you notice that it did actually um, come back. So now we get some information about the instance status. However, looking down through the output there, I can't really tell you what state it is. I see some information, but I don't see what state it's talking about. However, now notice that we do see a instance state property there. We can narrow that down by just looking at that instance state. And now you can see that the name is running. So that means my instance is running. So great. We've got the instance started. So now let's go ahead and stop it. One way we can stop an EC2 instance by using the stop EC2 instance command. We can do that by just passing the instance ID like we did up there, but we can also use the pipeline. So notice now that I have instance and I'm passing it to stop EC2 instance and it essentially does the same thing. I'm just using the pipeline. All right, so now we check and see what it is and then notice that it doesn't come up anymore because it's not in the running state. All right, so let's just assume it's, uh, it's going to be down right now. All right, so now, now that we've started one and stopped one, let's do a bunch of them at once. There's a couple ways to do this. The first off there is on line 44, where we can use the filter parameter. The filter parameter is a common parameter in a lot of different AWS PowerShell commands. And I've included a link here to give you some more information about using that filter. The get EC2 instance command let help actually has a really good breakdown of the filter. So in this instance here on line 44, I'm using the filter. I'm specifying the name and the value. It's a hash table. It always has a name and a value key. And then for the name I'm specifying, I want to see the instance ID. And for the value, I am specifying the value that I want. This will match as many different EC2 instances as I have matching that criteria. But for now, notice that I just did that. And then now I'm starting the EC2 instance. So same general thing, instance here could have been one or 50 different machines. It's just whatever matches that filter criteria. All right, so now that you have seen how we can do multiple ones with the filter, I can also do multiples with the pipeline as well. So on 47 to 48, I can simply run get EC2 instance and pipe everything to start EC2 instance or everything to stop EC2 instance. And it will essentially start or stop all the EC2 instances that I have. That's another good way to do it, which is the pipeline. All right, so next up is that waiting thing. I put a section here to dive into how we can figure out the state better because previously we had to just keep running that get EC2 instance status over and over again. In an automation script, it's, this isn't going to be interactive. You need a way to do this automatically. So to do that, we're again, you're going to use the get EC2 instance status, pass it the instance ID that I have, and then I'm going to look at instance state. So before, like before, we see that it is running. 
However, we need a flag, just a simple string to say up or down, running or not. So we can drill down into this, and then now you can see that that name, that code is removed, but now we have a value of running. And finally, get down farther, now we just have a single string of running. So now we have a single label to indicate if it's going to be stopped or running. Okay, so now let me just make sure that all of my instances are stopped. So notice that I had two there. It's going to go through and stop all of the instances that I currently have in my AWS account. Our next step here on line 68 is we kind of need to fix that issue that I call it where get EC2 instance status doesn't work for stopped instances. It really needs to work for instances in the stop state and in the running state or any state for that matter. To force get EC2 instance to include all of the instances, we just use the include all instance parameter and pass it a value of a Boolean true. So when I do this, now you can see it returned both of my EC2 instances that I have, regardless of the state. They were both stopped because I stopped them on line 64. So now that that is returning all of them. So now that we've got a piece of code that can return the status of all of our EC2 instances, let's now create some code to automatically check for that. So what I've done here, starting on line 72, I have a desired state. Right now the desired state is running. So I want to know when a particular instance is running. And then 73, I have a retry interval which is going to retry every five seconds. So whatever that value is for retry interval, it's going to re retry, keep retrying, checking, checking, checking to see if it's in that desired state. And then on line 74 there, there's one we're using that get EC2 instance status. We're including all instances and then passing the instance ID to true to make sure we're getting everything. Drilling down in like it did before with dot instance state dot name dot value, that just gets us the running or stopped. And then I'm saying if it's not equal to the desired state, then go down into 75 to the right host and the start sleep. This is going to keep running and running and running and running while it is not equal to my desired state. And then on line 76, that's an important one, that start sleep because if you don't have a, a delay in here in this while loop, it will continue as fast as PowerShell can possibly do it, which would not be a good idea for you or for uh, AWS, you'll probably uh, get a nice email saying, what are you doing hitting our API so much? Um, but anyway, so let's try that. So now let's see what the status is. So everything right now should be stopped. Okay, so right now I want the desired state is running. So I will go ahead and run this piece of code. And now you can see that it's saying, waiting for our instance to reach the state of running. It's going to just sit here forever forever we don't have a, a timeout yet on this but it's just going to sit here forever so now let me go ahead and start this with the management console so i believe so i'll go over here and now you can see i have my instance ids here so let's go ahead and just start this one from the console all right so now it's in the state of pending it's going to eventually go into running. So now we just wait a minute here and I'm not touching anything. I promise, I promise I'm not touching anything. I'm just going to wait here and hopefully if this works, it will stop saying waiting for our instance to reach the state of running and voila, that was pretty quick. So notice that it stopped the state of the script and until that state matched the desired state that we want. So now you notice that it is in running. Okay, so now we have the code to properly do that. Let's now swap it up a little bit. So now let's say that I wanna wait until it is stopped. So I'll put the desired state to stopped. And then I will create a function for this. I highly recommend you create a function for anything. And these wait functions are really good to do. I mean, I've created wait functions for just about anything. And here's a good one you can use for EC2 instances. Um, this function is called wait ec2 instance state and then you can see here that i built it that it has three parameters instance desired state and retry interval desired state is um, obviously what we just worked and i'm using a validate set parameter validation attribute here of running and stop so i can use tab completion i can show you that in a minute and then I have a user configurable retry interval. So if I want to check for uh, five seconds, it will do it by default. If I don't set anything, I could do 10 or 15 or whatever. 
And then on line 96 there, the instance, I've chosen to create it with pipeline support. So that allows me to pass the output of get EC2 instance directly to this, and it will know what it is. And then the code inside from 108 to 112 is exactly the same as it was before. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring this into my session so I can use it. And let's see here. Get EC2 instance. Let's see here. We're going to use this one. So right now it is running. So let's just go ahead and grab just this one for now. Instance ID. Okay, that instance ID, I'm saying the desired state is running. However, since I have that validate set in there, I could say running. Let me go down here and show you. I could say wait easy to instance uh, desired state running or stop. See, I have the option here, which is really nice. I have that option. So now it is currently running. So let's just see what happens when I say the desired state is running. If everything is working out well, it should just automatically release access back to the console. And there it does. And we got some verbose output because it did uh, run uh, get EC2 instance status and it right back to the console. All right, so let's go ahead and stop this. All right, it's in a state of stopping. So now, since it's not in that desired state of running, it's just going to just try and try and try and try until it's over. You may want to ha set a timeout for this. That would be a good uh, pra PowerShell practice for you to set a timeout for this to see. So this doesn't last forever. But I think this is a really good example of creating that, uh, that function. We'll just wait and wait and wait until it's actually started. So that's a really good way to create that PowerShell function from it. So that has been how to start and stop EC2 instances with PowerShell. Thanks.